where we, where we, <laughs> we nearly died because we only had four people. Yeah, well, I, I, I've got something relatively usable for that. Don't worry. So, okay. uh, Don't basically... Don't worry, Biddy's probably going to die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, or yes. We have a win, though. Yeah, Biddy, Biddy is standing next to the weird elf, the, the, the weird dusk elf guy. And Biddy's not worried. But, um, anyway, uh, Strahd, uh, Strahd has invited you all to his, to his castle. Uh, he's, uh, given you all food to eat. Uh, which is apparently very delightful food. Uh, for those of you who've tasted, I know like one or two of your characters you, were barely touching it. I think part of that was the worry over, you know, what happened in the Feylands, since uh, that's where three of you, get, that's where two of them came from. That would be a uh, fox and a uh, omen, who are currently not here for this session, or at least not here right away for the session. So, uh, Strahd had basically said he was going to send you guys out to do something for him, or at least, you know, before he gave any information that David wanted. Um, he was going to, like, see what you guys were made of, and, you know, basically get you guys to uh, do some stuff for him. But I also said that he was hoping that, uh, you know, at least one of you, and he was mostly eyeing up the bard and uh, the, uh, the and Aki, uh, would be staying, you know, staying here at the castle with him and keeping him company. Well, the rest of you uh, went out on the mission. Yeah, the, the, the bard seemed to be reacting more fluidly with him. Mm. So who knows? Perhaps if you guys come back, she'll have a few pints of blood missing. Oh, God. <laughs> but we'll see. Um, so, uh, what would you guys like to do now? It looks like dinner's coming towards a close. Well, I'm kind of just waiting until um, until going to be leading the discussion out to uh, where was it? Um, he wanted us to go again. It was uh, he. Prison, wasn't it? Um, no, I believe he was mentioning Vlaki, or did I accidentally say Kresik last time I was here? I think you said Kresik. I didn't write down the location of the other one. Is it is it that other place? Okay. Regardless of what I may may or may not have said, uh, and I've now completely forgotten. Uh, I know that I meant to say Malaki. <laughs> How do you spell that? Uh, hold on, I'll spell it down for you. Uh, actually trying to look up the spelling. I am terrible at spelling. Here we go. <laughs> That's a, I'm good. Malaki. Okay. That would, that would be a nearby town. Uh, nearby town. Uh... To the west of here. Fair enough. He goes on to uh, say, "I need you to bring. To, sorry, I, I need you to go to my contact, their lady watching house, and see what she might need. The town for too long has been. De I keep hearing echoes. I'm sorry." Uh, the town for too long has been divided. Perhaps you will be able to help set it right again. And help her out to do so. See what we can We'll go to the town oh. and grass and see how we can... It's not like we have a choice, is it? Well, you always have a choice. The, the, the stride kind of grins over at Biddy. You couldn't always stay here with me and keep me entertained. <laughs> Read that noise. <laughs> is it possible that we might have some time to speak with our employer and see what uh, what he'd like to do? Of course. David, the boss would... David kind of looks over at you and nods. 
I think I will stay here for now. It should be all right. Dad looks over at... He looks over at Omen and, uh, and Ina and says, I do believe these two were indicating they would stay, so I will stay with them. I can probably get some more... Learn more here than I can out on the road with you helping. But Aki should go with you. Oh. <clears throat> well, um. If there's nothing else that you'd uh, like for us from uh, starting now, then just get a head start on our uh, trip to the town. But Aki. Unless anybody else has. Anything else they want to ask or do? Okay. Anyone? Green just checking. Some rest on the way there. The cart and the. Uh, be there in a couple hours, I assume? Yes. Right. Oh, no, I can't hear you at all. I was wondering why you were so quiet. Yeah. Clinton is usually very talkative, t t t very much a talker. Yeah, I can't. Is your mic muted? No, is your mic muted? I'll roll twenty, but or I'm sorry, on Discord, but you might have your mute mic. Let's just wait a minute for Quentin to, uh, to fix his, uh, whatever. <sighs> My cat's all stretchy right now. I think she's enjoying the fact that there's some nice warm sun out there now. Instead of, instead of the cold we've been having. Um, we had, we've been having um, on and off like really heavy rain showers. But recently, yeah, we had a full on, uh, a full on like torrential storm a couple days ago, which is incredibly rare in the south of England. Ouch. Yeah, like it was so bad because um. In Southampton, the place where I live, it's like it's right by the coast. So, okay. Uh, and a lot of it, a lot of the, um, a lot of the places, especially the further you go closer to water, there, they're uh, generally a lot closer to water level. So there have been a, so when it happened, there are a lot of places in like um, around like the city centre of Southampton where actually the um, there were a lot of floods. Homes flooded, a lot of the roads flooded. It was actually quite bad to see when I saw the pictures the other day. Ouch. Yeah. I'm fortunate because I, because I live on the highest point in the city, which is like a hill. I'm fine there. It was just cool to see, but at the same time. Uh, Quentin, if you have something to say and, you, and your mic isn't working, you could also type it. Yeah. Maybe try restarting Discord if it's getting an like that. Uh, fun times with Discord. Yeah, I just realized I forgot to add a weapon to to 
to Akai's <laughs> skill sheet. I still have to have all of his spells listed. But then I forgot to give him a weapon. And of course he's holding a weapon, because he's protect you know, he's protecting that, so. Let me just add it real quick to his sheet so that he can actually be effective when he goes out to hang out with you guys. <laughs> Okay, it's going to be trying it again. Uh, so, do you guys have any questions? Um, uh, no. Green just. Does anybody green. actually trust the vampire? Never, never trust the vampire. I imagine well, you wouldn't I mean, be talking discussing that though in his presence. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Because you know where I come from, vampires. But this yeah. guy lives in a place that only shows up every what, hundred years. Well, that's what David has told you. That according to local legend, it, it around me, it, the people of Meek probably heard the story that the uh, the the path to Barovia tends to appear every hundred years. Yeah, everyone's quiet. <coughs> I'm just, oh, sure. I'm just, I'm just waiting. You know, pretty much throughout the entire team of um, dinner, Green was just kind of sat there, just quiet. Not really. Did Green do any of the eating? Um, he tried a little bit of it. He, wasn't, he didn't want to seem too rude. He just didn't really. He just was sat quietly, ate a bit of the food, you know. Uh, that's basically what Kurt did, too, except, you know, Kurt is actually talking. Dealt with vampire. Yeah. So this is anything new. Green's kind of been doing his best to keep his expression mute. Like, I both trust and don't trust trust Strahd because you know the people here do respect him to an extent. So he's obviously not a terrible leader, but at the same time, you know, it really depends on who you talk to. Yeah. It really does. But if, to be fair, we've not exactly spoken to many people. We've only spoken to, like, two Crazy people. Crazy old lady who we're convinced was speaking by certain people. Well, we, can't, we don't know whether those pies are people. <laughs> well, that's why I said we're convinced that she is. Mm. And, like, we should probably go check out the Windstar's uh, corpse pictures there. Well, the other graves didn't really show any signs of being dug up, did they? No, in fact, the, uh, the, the most recent of the graves that you saw was from uh, three years before. Yeah, and the entire graveyard had been relatively well overgrown. Yeah, because uh, the, really they had told you that the, the priest had died about three years ago as well. Yeah. That he killed himself. Yeah, and that's not a good thing, but then again. It's, this is, this is, yeah. I believe he also gathered up the information that it was something to do with his son that caused him to commit suicide. That's then, of course, you saw what was in the basement. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, oh boy. Well, we didn't see it, we just spoke. Oh, that's right, you, you're, you guys just heard it. You you, you weren't yeah. the idiot. You, you were the party who opened up the thing and nearly got themselves killed at level at le level two or three. And my mom was in there. Yeah, that was character. Hello, yeah. yay, yeah. Quentin's yeah. back. Yay, we can hear you. Uh, I found the problem. My my security program won't let me send my audio 
out. Huh. Well, that's, that's well, I'm going to tell you this now. I actually, you sound way better than you have previously. Yeah, you're more uh, clear. Yeah. yeah, you actually sound really clear. Yeah. Extremely. It's like a brand new voice. It caught me off guard for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> and you realize, oh, it's Quentin! He's got a new setup. <laughs> so, Quentin, what, what were you trying to add all this time? Uh, what? You, 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 you must have realized that, that you, nobody, cause nobody was responding to anything you were trying to add to make you realize that you, nobody could hear you. So. I was like, maybe they, they, they can't hear me. I, I was like, well, may, maybe I'm, I'm just being rude and I'm... It seems I know, and I was like, ah, I know. I, I just, until the moment, like when it was silent and I was talking and no one was responding, I didn't notice really. I was just like, ah, they're, they're probably just ignoring me. Why would you ignore like, you, dude? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm the stupid young person. No, ah. not really. All right, let, 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 we have enough, had enough delays. Let, let's get going. Let's continue. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> so, what would the party like to do? Uh, well, can, if everything's wrapped up now, I'm assuming we get up and leave. Yeah, da David, Omen, and Anna are all staying for now. They're going to entertain Strad uh, <laughs> while the rest of you go go on towards Valaki to um, talk with Lady Watchin House. That Strahd says is an ally, it's a supporter of his. We're, we're forced to do whatever he has. He has hostages at this point, so like... Uh... Well, he, he didn't actually say hostages, but he did, he, he put it, phrased it as request, but... <laughs> yeah, you, 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 could, you, you can, um, yeah, you, you, you can assume that they're hostages. Yeah, the meeting is very much heavily implied that these guys are hostile. If we don't do what he says, bad things will happen. Oh, I mean, I'm sure uh, Bard will be content with staying here. I mean, she does all four. four dance, so. <laughs> Obe is just like, all right, whatever. I guess we're heading out. Yep. Yep. Be that way. I mean, well, peace out, Lord Strahd. We're going to go and uh, take mm. care of this for you. Green, um, Green gets up. He kind of gives um, gives Strahd a half bow and and thanks him for the meal, which is actually the first thing he said all evening, and then goes to follow. Look, uh, I was trying to get your tokens together so I could get them off this map. Oh. Oh, <laughs> As Pity um, passes Rahadeen, he just pats Rahadeen on the shoulder like, "Good luck." <laughs> Rahadeen kind of stiffens at the touch. And, uh... Flirting with the help. Flirting with the help. I don't care. Uh, let's see. Back in Bavaria. Back in the cart we go. Yeah, Eki looks a little bit, um... Disturbed that David is staying, staying behind without him, but David had insisted that he leave with you guys. Now, would somebody like to play the to, to be navigating at this point? Uh. Any volunteers? Who thinks they're good at it? I'll try. I mean, I can try. I don't know. I I I might have a plus three, so like I don't know. A crypt oh, token is now on the map to act as the navigation system. Oh boy. Right. Our destination relies on you. Uh, Strad, Strad at that point had said that as long as you're heading straight to Valaki, none of my servants will, um, will disturb you. But some of them might get a little frisky once you start wandering off the trail. Alright, so we're going to Valaki. All he said about it was west following the road. So I'm sure. assuming that we're going to want to follow the. Um, I believe there was actually a crossroad here, wasn't there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know which. I don't know if that way goes west or not. 
that. It looks like it'd be like northwest. Yeah. Either I mean, or we can go I mean, it. Either that or go going back to where we came from. So like. Yeah. yeah so I assume that that crossroad is the um, way we have to go. That's a clue. So, you've once again uh, come upon a set of gates. Uh, let me do reveal areas. That look right, a lot. There, I would definitely. Sorry, go ahead. A lot like the ones you saw earlier. Let's re reiterate the description. Um, you can see the fog that's spilling across the road in front of you. Impenetrable woods all around you. But high above. High stone buttresses are looming in the gray fog, huge iron gates hanging on the stonework with dew clinging to them, and headless statues of our armed guardians flank the gate. The gates, in this case, happen to be standing open. I mean, that's definitely going in a northwesterly direction. Yeah. It's still technically west. Is there any side? Not on this one, no. Do we see any signs on the way here? No, you do not. Damn it. You know, if we see his minions, we'll know we're going the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. We'll know that we went the complete wrong way to, than we were supposed to. I mean, maybe no, if we right, the right way, yeah, just, just go, man. Probably. Alright, turn the gate. If we die, it's all your fault, too. Nope, it's not the guy's fault. <laughs> Look, I can, Look, I can run away, so I don't care. Look, I can hide, so I don't care. Yeah. Yeah, well, I can run as fast as fucking possible. And I can fly, too. That's a th you can only fly for a minute, though. Yeah, that's a bit faster than you guys. I, I can fly <laughs> as well, fuck you. <laughs> I don't All have right, to fly, I can go over the northwest. I'm an expert at hiding, so I don't have to fly. Hmm. <laughs> Let's just see if we need to. Yeah. Go that way. Yeah, I like to put together everything you can see around here. The impenetrable woods all around you, the fog. It's not quite as thick as as the fog you originally came through, but it's still clinging to your skin. And it's very dark out here as you clip your carriage along. Gross. Well, it looks like this race going west, so... Better blood be the right one. Let's hope so. I'm there. Yes, that's my dice cup. So, gentlemen, quick question. For what are we actually going to uh, do? Seeing he has like a shit ton of our friends, like. basically held hostage, or like literally held hostage, I think we need to do what he says for now. Like. I don't think fucking with him is going to end well. Well, I mean, it might for somebody in our group. <laughs> I mean, we, we'll be fine with him, but like, he can probably come and find us right now and kill us if he wants to. Like, oh, I'm sure he can. As, uh, as you come along um, the road, you see... I get the proper description, am I looking to the correct page? You see a decrepit windmill in the distance, up on up on a hill to the west. It looks a bit, a lot more haggard than the windmill pictures you saw back in the Death House. Oh, windmill! Let's go have a look at it. That might be I... the windmill that they we had the the deed for. Look, if it for. if it's if it's connected to that fucking house, I'm not going in there. <laughs> if it's connected hey, to that it house, it was just lit on fire. It doesn't I'm look. Sure Oh, wait, I don't know about the house. I can't say anything. God damn it. I'm pretty sure this is what Strahd would classify as going off the beaten path. Uh, uh, it is west, so... It is also very dark It is also very dark out here right now. You might want to consider camping for the night. And it will be a great spot to camp. But not going off the beaten path, we're looking for shelter. <sighs> Alright. Sure. You go first. We can go. Fine, well, I will go. Uh, let's go around then. 
Let me go ready. Rude ass dogs. She's They're both rude. Alright. Above your heads, you hear a, a crow uh, calling, or maybe a raven. Okay, this crow's my lung is going. Can anybody speak bird? Do we have a droid? <laughs> nope. No bird. I'm sorry. Hello, bird. How's it going? What's your plan? Are you, uh... Just continuing along the road? We, uh, they might be camped. I believe we were circling around the back so we could store the carriage at the back of the mill and then gonna go up and take a look at the mill. Yeah, right. yeah, do you guys want to go into the mill? I'm all up for not going in there. Sure. Oh, yeah. Is shelter from the outside world why we go have a rest? That and is, sleep. That is true. It's not like we're going too far off the beaten path. There might be some. All right. Oops. Right. When Star, your token is broken again. I'll fix it. Oh, uh, can and somebody my cast cat is in the light. way. Hold on. Can somebody cast light on my shit? Because you know I can't yep. see in the door. Yeah. Yep, I set my fingers in the light. Yeah, you actually have to walk up and touch it. The um, the the, the raven kind of lands on, on an eve of the of the windmill and calls at you again. Hello, Mr. Never raven. More. Is is it? I, I'm going to talk to bird. I'm gonna to talk to the bird. Uh, call once if you want it to go in. Call twice if you think it's a stupid idea. <laughs> the bird just kind of tilts its head, looking at you. And right. call three times if you think Green's an idiot. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Green just huge, huge. Green just looks at you with just a look that just says, "Why?" What was he just Do New block. Oh. How, who oh. do you get off on calling the new guy, giving him shit, man? He's been there longer than you have. Who do you think you are? He's a wind star. He won't last very long. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> have his time. Hey, I will last for a sizable amount of time. <laughs> hey, if that, uh, if well, we saw that. Uh, Gallo has anything to say about problem. Well, as long as we stay out of, out of anywhere where I can get hanged, then <laughs> I should you know be fine. You know we're in a forest, right? You know we're in a forest, right? You can be hanged literally anywhere. You just piss off the wrong person. A voice whispers I, in your head. <laughs> I, I pull out the rope like we have everything with us right now. Yeah, you guys are too goody to to do that. While these guys, while these guys bickering, Green goes up and he tests the door to the map. Okay. Yeah. You hear it go. You hear it creak slightly, and you look inside to see a, a a dark space. It smells a bit musty. It seems like nobody's been here in a while. Uh. You can see a, a, a barrel on one, uh, one side, you see, you know, various bits of dust and gourds and long, uh, long dead furnace in one side. Okay, well, Green takes a step inside. Yep, far right there. And the, 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 the raven at that point, uh, takes off, circling Hi. up into the sky. I don't like this. I don't like this either. Actually, Betty will go up, start to go upstairs, but very quietly. Uh, quick question: As like one, as a haunted one, would it would I get any advantage on ominous signs of a raven? I don't know, probably not. Roll well, intelligence.
good intelligence. You could th you think that maybe something death related is going on here that maybe this place could be haunted, but the raven was trying to tell you something. Oh yeah, for for comforting. A couple of seconds after Biddy's gone upstairs, um, Green follows him up there, you know, letting him see if the coast is clear first before going properly. Yeah, of course, always make a windstar go first. That's the best way to deal with it. Well, yeah, but, well I am a rogue. They he die anyway, so. He is one of the quieter ones, so. Uh, I, I want to check out the downstairs for stuff. Alright. Let me get to the right page, and I will tell you ex tell you if there's anything left there. Is there stuff here? With a twelve, probably not much. Maybe some yeah. food. Yeah. I can't quite step on this. I can't either. All right. Yeah. So the dirt cakes the windows. Um, the 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 floor is just all covered in dust. You see bits and pieces of uh, what looks like flour on various surfaces that have now like been there for years. The, there's a large gear shaft, though it's non-functional. Uh, you pretty much you see little little empty cages. Uh, though one of them appears to have the bones of a frog in it. Uh, you see other little bits of uh, bone uh, of tiny little bones. That seemed to have fallen down a little bit into corners. It's hard to tell what they came from. Uh, Green and Biddy are going upstairs. Okay. Oh no, uh, Green's actually staying down. Oh, sorry. Uh, Biddy's going. Well, Green, was, well, Green was going to um, check the door. Okay. How big are the bones? Like. Oh, sorry. What? What? What did you say? Sorry. Like, bone dimensions like dog-sized bones, like big. Uh, roll an intelligence check. Now, Biddy will just have a look around this part of the area right. and see if he can find. Uh, as for anything. what Biddy's seeing, uh, Biddy is looking at the top of the, uh, the, the one of the topper par parts of the gear shaft. Uh, you see an old decrepit bed, uh, the the stuff the straw stuffing in it kind of falling out. You see a bunch of moldy clothes that all seem to be child size next to two. Uh, Several empty cages that are about, you know, very small size cages. Well, small sort of, although you could probably fit a, you know, a gnome in there. Ugh. You also see a trap door in the ceiling, uh, nine feet high, nine feet high, and bits of shreds of a canopy over by the bed. Uh, Artovi, uh, you pick up one of the bones, and you. you you might not be a forensics person, but you have this feeling, this probably this creeping sensation in the back of your head that you're looking at a human bone. Uh, guys, I really don't like it here. Um, uh, let's just say, and I hold the bone. Uh, this isn't from an animal. Well, they do say that man is the worst, is the most dangerous. Yeah, but there are bones of it here, so I don't know what's loose here. Are you climbing up the ladder? Uh, I am actually waiting for Green, because usually Green follow, would follow. All right. Green goes up. So, now, oh, uh, as soon as Green... I would... I'm, oh, oh, go. As soon as uh, Green was... comes into view, Biddy will start to go up the ladder. Our trophy's gonna go up... There's try to see if we right. can get the guys before they do something stupid. Biddy, you've reached the windmill's peak, a domed chamber filled with old machinery. There's not much to move around. Light slips into this attic through small holes in the wall. Okay. So pretty much nothing really up here. Looks like this place is empty. The door stays open? What? I'm gonna make sure the door stays open. Like yeah, you're looking out into, uh, into the fog and the darkness okay. out there. That's okay. I'm okay. Oh right, it's dark. It's it's dark. Maybe you wouldn't have seen any light coming in through the window. So, sorry, through the uh, the ceiling. <laughs> it's all dark. I apologize. Well, 
That's what well, happens when you just nothing... read the description and forget what time of day it is. If there's nothing up here, Biddy will start to head down to the first floor. Ah, sorry, I found, I found, I refound the description of the first floor. Uh, it looks like the ground floor of the mill was uh, converted into a makeshift kitchen, but it's filthy, covered in dust, and hasn't been used in some time. You can see dish baskets filled with ancient dishware, all caked over. Um, there's uh, what looks like a chicken coop, although there's no chickens inside, just some bits of feather, feathers. Uh, and... Yeah, I said, you, you're pretty much on the ground near one of the other cages. You see um, bits of pieces of what looked like a a toad um, reduced to bones. And then there's other bones that you guys found that appear to be human bones. Hmm. There's also an upright barrel in the center of the room. Uh, it's completely covered in some sort of disgusting matter that's crudded to the inside of it. It's hard to tell what it used to be. As, as soon as I see Debbie, I'm going to say, like, we, we've got to get out of here. Uh, I found some very disturbing stuff downstairs. And now as soon as you get to this floor, Otovi, you notice that there are uh, there are a bundle of moldy clothes. All appear to be sized for children, along with cages that could only really fit gnomes or maybe children. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Otovi's going to look real sad. <laughs> Like, super sad. Child, huh? Like, he, he, he's gonna let a tear flow down his, his cheek. Say, guys, I think we need to get out of here. I think we need to rest here. It's the only place for, with shelter. I found human bones downstairs. And so, there are human clothes right here. I which see means... The Thing eats humans lives here. <clears throat> you, do you want to get attacked while we're sleeping? Question mark. <laughs> I mean, of course not. But what's the chances of something attacking us? I, I don't so know what they're seeing... saying. Since I'm already downstairs. Probably a shadow upstairs. Don't fucking say that. Remember what happened <laughs> last time you said that? There. Literally no, I don't actually. Are Aki kind of face palms. People bones here. <laughs> Green eventually starts going downstairs. Yeah, Billy will start go after Green. Yeah, he'll, 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 head down, he'll head down to the first. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll do the same. I'll, There's I'll... no point here. Hmm. I take it on the um. I take it on the floors, these two... Are these things at the side here doors, or are they windows? Because they look kind uh, of... They're old caked-over windows. Oh. The cages that you mentioned, those are empty, correct? Yeah, the, one of them does have the bones of a frog, and another one has, like, bits of, of chicken feathers in it. This is very small, though. Is there a wagon covered? Sorry, what? A wagon? Is it covered? Oh, there, there isn't actually a wagon in here. It's, it, it's uh, not here at the moment. Uh, yeah. you know, these are these, these are all static pictures. So, I, I'm asking though, is our wagon? Oh, your wagon? No, you don't have a wagon. You have a carriage. Okay, so it is covered. Got it. Well, I don't know about you guys, but. I'm getting really bad vibes from this joint, so I'm gonna go sleep at the carriage. You yeah. know. That's probably for it's probably best that we don't spend. And I'm time. going to leave. Uh, green, green follows Kurt. If if everyone leaves, I will close the door and I will put the wooden stake through the door. I think he kind of uh, it kind of looks over at Kurt and sa and, and says. You know, after all we went through and it, it went through, I'm amazed that you are, are so quick to flee. Well, Aki, tell me about it's these because guys. I like talent. living. You enjoyed okay. the last ten years of your life, correct? Besides, unknown territory. I didn't enjoy the last ten 
fail. Yes, but look at the evidence back inside there. You, you, you used to you, you used to be an investigator, Kurt. Nobody's been there in years. Yeah. See? Hang on. Self-control. I'm going to do a will test. Will check to see if I uh, listen to him or not. Or if I stick to my gut. See, this guy gets me. There's no reason right. to be afraid of this windmill. You know what? I'm like, uh... Then I go back in. <laughs> can I do a straight intelligence check to see if I can figure out what was here before us? Sure. Alright, here we go. Eleven. Probably someone that was into baking and cooking. Where'd you guys find upstairs? Uh, uh, close of child's. Uh, here we found child bones. So I would say it's fair to assume something here either captures or eats child. Uh, no. uh, what do we know of that would eat children? I don't want to find out. Uh, sure. Kind of check, intelligence check, what of those. Make... History check. Uh, uh, I'll do a history check. Ooh, that's not good. You know, of too, you all know of too many things that could possibly eat children. Everything from, from a rampaging ogre to a hungry nobleman who's demanding demanding the poor feed them his feed feed their children to him to uh, you know a, a dragon wanting to settle the debts to a hag to a, a, a you know a a, a demon worshipping cult that could be killing and eating children. You know, take your pick. Any anything could be eating a child. But whatever yeah, it was, not I see. Here's what we need to do. We need to hide and rest. Keep watch and we lock the I say we only uh, stay on the on the ground floor. Just to be I safe. Agree. Whatever uh, all of you staying on the uh, uh, GM note. Yeah. All of you trying to stay into the in the ground floor would be squeezing together. You wouldn't be able to lay down. Yeah, it would be uh, controlled enough. Right. I'll be I'll, fine. I'll be on the second floor. If you, I'll be on the second floor. I'll well. be yes. I'll be outside in a tree. I'm gonna sleep outside in the tree. I'm not gonna stay in there. Fuck that. Uh, I do believe that the trees are not close enough to the windmill. Like the windmill's up on a uh, up on a, a, a hill, and the trees would be too far away for anybody to come and help you if you were attacked. Fuck, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll be on the second. I'll be on the second floor then. Sure. You need to stay vigilant though, because whatever was here before might not be gone from. Now what? I'll I'll be searching the third floor to see if we might find some more clues on what the hell was here. Alright. Yeah, yeah. One of the yeah, things. You see the. Oh, go ahead. Well, one of the things Green will do is that because there are two people standing up on the leaf, so he'll he will um kind of bed down at the foot of the stairs, just with keeping an ear out, just in case something happens up there. Alright. So, what you see in in this third floor, Toby? Is you see the, cent the the central gear shaft. You see uh, a a rotted wooden closet of some kind, crates, um, the sorry, ca small cages um, with little doors in them. They kind of look like crates, though. Uh, next to what looks to be a closet is that heap of molding clothes, a ladder that climbs up another trap door, a nine feet tall trap door, and a very moldy and Mostly destroyed bed. Well, not really destroyed. It's more like the stuffing has all come out with the bits of straw with a tattered canopy. Uh, it looks to be about human sized. I'll be sleeping right next to the gear shaft. Alright. I'm going to sleep under what I assume is this cart right No, that, that's what I said. There's no actual cart in there. It's the, the, That's floor oh, space. Okay. The, uh, the, 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 yeah, because as I said, I, I, this is my second playthrough, I, t I took some of the events, um, basically had it as if somebody had come through and done some of the events from the book already, a couple of years before, and, the, 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 and some of, so some of these structures that's supposed to have stuff in them are now abandoned. 
and other th ones have new monsters that have moved in. So I'm basically using the book as just a as kind of a reference rather than uh, gospel. Well, then I'm going to just leave it here. All right. So. Uh, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, I'm going to kind of, like, rest, like, to the point where I'm actually resting, but very lightly. Alright. So I can kind of be a little bit more perceptive. Okay. So, uh, Aki decides to, to take watch and is kind of, like, watching the door. Um, uh, Green says that he'll take second watch. Okay. And then, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have fun on the weekend. Biddy will take third, and he could possibly take the fourth watch as well. He is an elf, so he doesn't really need four hours of sleep. Right? Yeah. Half elf. He's a high elf. Uh, I'll, I'll take fourth as well from up here. All right. my watches, I'll go down, but... You know. All right. So, okay. So first off, uh, when it you reach the uh, the second watch, Biddy, do you take second or third? Third. I, t I, t I took second. Okay. Um, or Tovi, which watch did you take again? Fourth. Okay. Fourth. So Biddy, as you come down for for third watch, you see that that Akai still seems to be awake. He's just kind of leaned up against this this wall. He he doesn't look tired at all. He's kind of leaning up there, kind of watching you guys. Hey, you should probably get some sleep. He shakes his head. Already rested. I'm fine. Okay, so he kind of studies Biddy for a moment. Where do you hail yes. from? Where do you hail from? Why, why would that be a, a concern for you? I'm just curious. Well, you, if you want, if you're wondering, you could have asked my brothers that apparently died along. The <laughs> when I am fo following around da David, I usually allow him to do the talking. I usually do not get too much of a chance to do the talking myself. As such, I did not have much of a chance to talk to your brothers. Uh, well... I used, I used to be a spy for... a certain group. And that's primarily where I learned everything I know. Child life wasn't the best. But that's about as much as I'm willing to share with someone I hardly know. I see. Meanwhile, Artovi, roll a wisdom saving throw. Boy. Not good. Uh, Not good. Not good. He's going to die. Oh, Toby. You're, you're, you're woken in the, middle, in the middle of the night by uh, the sound of a, of, of a child weeping. Oh, no. Uh, I'm, uh, just just for, for safety's sake, uh, I'm going to throw my hammer into the shaft to make so that it makes a lot of sounds coming down. Uh, Green did say that he was sat by the um, stairs, so does he hear that? Yeah, yeah, I think that Actually, pretty much all of you would probably hear. Well, everybody who's awake would hear that, so. What? Pretty much everyone but Kurt, maybe. <laughs> Green well, I was say I was sleeping pretty lightly. We'll save, Kurt. We'll save. Hmm. All right, you're you're awake. Now that I hopefully warn someone that something is here, I'm gonna go investigate it. 
Yay. Green gets up and he draws his sword and he um goes up to he goes up. He looks up he looks around. Is anyone else awake? Everyone's awake. Everyone's yeah. looking up Green towards just... the thing. Sounds like Artovi is having a problem. So now oh, you're yeah. hearing Artovi you, as as you listen to the sound, it suddenly becomes two two distinct sounds of weeping, both of that sound sounding like children weeping. And they seem to be coming from the location of the crates. Uh, I'm, I'm, get up there. I'm gonna give the crates like, like a knock, like. The do doors on two of them pop open, and you can see the ghostly specters of children inside. Help me! They both say in unison. Uh, I'm I'm good at that. Uh, oh, what what do you want me to do? Like, uh. Find you a place to bury you, or like something else. <laughs> but their their ghostly hands reach out to towards you, feeling cold and to mm. as they touch your touch your flesh. Help me! They both scream. They, they both scream in your head. Roll a wisdom saving throw. Has Green come upstairs by that point? Uh, yeah. That. Green, okay. Kurt. That's better. It just feels very cold. At this point, Green, you can definitely hear the help me's. The, 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 the sound of two children calling for help. help okay. Me. Oh. Shit. Um, right, can oh. I roll religion or whatever to figure out what the fuck these things are and what needs to be done? Sure. I'm going to help them with 13. Uh, you know, there's some kind of ghosts, disquieted spirits, two children, two, two ghostly children inside cages. I don't know. Kirk, for some reason, you, you don't see anything. You have no idea what the hell's going on. As far as you're concerned, you're in a nightmare right now. I can, and I can see them reaching out to touch or Toby, right? Yeah, they're reaching out towards our Toby, okay, calling for help. Toby, grab him by the collar and yank him backwards. Strength check, please. I'm gonna roll up. Biddy might as well see if he Twelve. knows what to do. You gotta pull him back towards the bed strongly, the feet know. kind of <laughs> slapping against the ground. Artovi, what do you do? You're being dragged. Uh, I'll let myself be dragged. Yeah. The, the, like two go the two ghost children climb out of, out of their uh, respective cages, and they're still, their eye is still fixed on Artovi. Help me! They both say in slightly different voices, but in sync with each other. T tell us how, and we'll try. Anyone else wish to add anything? Uh. Um. Hey, I think we should leave. Probably for the probably for the best. But yeah, I told you I didn't like this place. Let's just let let me just state that it's only this floor that's having a problem. The other floors are fine. For now. <laughs> are there any, were there any bones on this floor that were found? No, but there was a bunch of moldy clothing. Okay. Maybe something um, in the moldy clothing. Unfortunately, one of them is standing on the moldy clothing. Well, they're not. It's not really standing. I'm just but, kind of pulled the tokens in to show that there's two of them there. They're both kind of like in. They're both kind of climbing out of the cages, which are right, which, which are right where the Otobi token is. It's just such a small little area that it's hard to push them all together. Trying to go side of the window. I have an idea. Set this place on fire. <laughs> Dude, just, just no, it not. This is at least the second time that's been suggested, Aki has points out. Because this place is haunted, something evil rests here. So if we destroy their home, they'll have to go somewhere else. Or we take those bones we found downstairs and we bury them. Yeah, well, like it. Just like we did before. Let's Maybe try that. Fire. Then we can set this place on. Biddy will take sure, a closer uh... look at. <laughs> Biddy will take a closer look at the clothing. Investigation check. 
Oh. You don't know anything, and now one of the ghosts is floating towards you. Uh, Karina's we'll save, please. Up. Oh. With some saving throw. With some saving throw. The, 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 the little ghost child <laughs> grabs you, and you can screams into your head, Help me! Well, the other one is the other one seems to be creeping towards Green and Artovi. Uh, let's see. The uh, but he, your head is currently filled with the with the sound of the ghost. Your body is feeling cold uh, as the ghost kind of vanishes into you, and you feel that, like the the need to to curl into a ball and weep. Oh, you're kidding! Me. Is he is he curled into a ball now? Yes. Okay, oh. everybody, grab and roll. <laughs> Go the stairs. Uh, um, can I... Aki, um, help me roll it up the ask stairs. A, ask a question uh, that might potentially work. Would the spell, considering that this that clearly something going on, that it's causing a condition on um, Biddy right now, would the spell Lesser Restoration work on Biddy right now? Actually, yes, I think it would. Yeah. In which case, um, what Green does is that he crouches down next to Biddy, basically just lays his hand on Biddy's head, and then he just begins to um, say a prayer to his father, and then he casts uh, Lesser Restoration. All right. The ghost kind of uh, pulls itself free from Biddy, and Biddy is now released from his, uh, from his current affliction. God, I hate spirits. And the ghost scream. The ghost screams as it's as it's forced out of uh, uh, out of the elf. It's like ah. And without even wasting another second, Green just says, "Go, go now, now." <laughs> and basically, don't have to tell me twice. I'm getting the hell out of this place. <laughs> yeah. He, and Green basically just grabs Octavia by the collar again and basically just gestures for him to go first. Yeah. yeah well, meanwhile, the other ghost attempts to touch Green. Uh, Green, please roll a wisdom a, a, a wisdom saving throw. Take that 19. You end up leaving it behind. Yeah, all the while um, continuing to chant a prayer to Father. Basically, he just yep. and he basically just starts making his way down to the first floor, and he's going to go find the bones of those children, what he assumes to be of those children. I'm going to help. Hmm. Do we bring yeah. a shovel? <laughs> Looks like there's various b uh, small bones down here. Other children, probably. Specifically looking, um... But it looks like it's, like, as if they were being... As you're looking around, you notice that off to one side of where the where you found the bone, the bone fragments, uh, is there is a pestle and mortar filled with some kind of dust. Guys? Huh. I'm thinking this is bone. More than my... And I wonder if the door... <laughs> This, I'm gonna go out on the limb and assume this is witchcraft. And I've met a couple witches in my time. They're not very friendly. At least not the ones I met. So, we're going to get out of here? Yeah, uh, let, let's go. And I guess the best thing to do is just torch this place. Yes. Yep, video. What's on the right page? Can anybody use Firebolt? That, no, that person he... died. Damn it. I have a tinderbox. Go, tinderbox, go. Well, instead of instead of trying to light fire to the thing outside, there is the... Um... The what? Sorry about that. Am I right? Um, no, like hay or dry grass inside the window. No, but instead of them, instead of trying to light fire to the outside of the window, light fire to the um oven that's inside and just stoke the flames. Let let that basically just catch fire to something. So it'll bring the rest of it up in flames. Okay. Okay, you so go in there, Ben. Yeah, I'll go. I'll yeah sure. Yeah. Alright. Green goes in with him, basically just starts picking up bits of 
wood, anything that's on the ground that looks like it's made of wood, just chucking it on fire. So that's kind of like a pile that can be on fire. Right, so you figure out, you, you kind of like take apart, you know, bits of boxes and here and there that were already falling apart and most likely left behind and whatever lived to your left. Yep. You start shoving it into the furnace. Soon you have, uh, the, the entire furnace is stuffed filled with this various kindling. Mm -hmm. And then we start lighting it. You see a nice smolder starting to happen. Okay. Soon this so, area uh, is getting to fill, to fill with smoke. Okay. Burn, no, baby, burn. Fine. Let's get out. Let's get. Let's step outside. Let's go. Moving away back down. The carriage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Kurt, are you gonna stay? Are, are you going to run out of there? Or are you gonna stay in there and take a do a con save? Yeah, sorry, I was doing. I was on another tab. <laughs> That's okay. I was just making sure you weren't staying behind. Oh yeah, no, fuck that. I'm the one who suggests burning the motherfucker. So by the time oh, you guys uh head off in your in your carriage, uh, you can see the the uh, just before dawn, you could see the uh. The whole front of the uh, of the, wind, the old windmill begin to catch fire. You know, there's a, a eerie glow coming out from the front of it, showing that the old windmill is starting to catch fire. <laughs> Green, just, Green, just, so, Green just looks at it and says, "How much do you want to bet that Gerard's going to take issue with us for that?" I don't know. We'll just say it was an accident. <laughs> considering that we have, considering that it's. Perhaps a guest, but considering we had that raven watching us earlier, the crow, I, whatever it was. I'm going to get that the crow has something more to do well, than just Well, we can tell him. him. What's this? Okay. Tried to stay the night there. Some shit happened. One thing led to another, and all of a sudden the place is on fire. Yeah, we, we were close. <laughs> we, we wanted to, like, have he a little bit of fora, and we accidentally. And like the fire spread and it turned into a fireball. I don't know what happened. We just ended up accidentally forgetting to put out the fire after we yeah. And it kind of spread. We had a scroll of burning hands, we used it, and the place caught on fire. <laughs> okay, that's just dumb. You were just terrified of the, of, the little of the ghost children and had to run away. Hey, they tried to possess me. They they did. <laughs> can can I make some kind of check to know how to deal with ghosts in the future? Sure. What what would that be? Arcana. Yes. History. Arcana. Yay! Let's let's go. Nope. No idea. As far as you're concerned, considering what just happened, fire seems to work. <laughs> or, or you know, letting them possess you and then murdering yourself. <laughs> that might work too, I know. Yeah, but that's a bad idea. I told you we'd be completely with that. So we're gonna continue going. So that's what. Is that even a road? Nope, he, he's wandered off into the hills. Oh, whoops. I thought that was, it looked like a road. So, north is the road. Yeah. See the road twisting to the north from here. This doesn't look like best, but oh well, let's go. Well, mm, west I mean, is an impenetrable forest, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean the other road would have gone back to like the town we first came in, right? Yeah, no, yeah, that would have been east. You don't want to eat that, Lyra. No, it's a piece of paper. Sorry, I took my attention really away from the screen for a moment because my cat was e eating something that she wasn't supposed to. Let's just hope Straw doesn't get off us for this, even though it's the only We should have way. asked him for a map direction. Yeah, I mean, yeah. whoever laid all these roads here, he sure didn't know how to do it. Come on, look look at how, how the fuck are these roads useful. I know, right? They're all windy. Well, they, they, yeah, they respect the forest more. Oh, who cares about forest? So it is now day daytime, or at least what passes for daytime in Barovia. Uh, you see a bit of of sunlight peeking through the fog, and you could hear the sound from here and smell the odor of a lake. 
somewhere to the north of you. Oh, oh, like water civilization, maybe. And ahead of you, you see a great walled town. So, give me a minute, and I'll bring you over to Valaki. Oh, cool! Read it. <laughs> oh, cool! Civilization, somewhere where see, I can get. I knew, see, I knew we, I could get us there. Uh, I don't know how, but somehow Biddy's gonna end up hanging right now. <laughs> so, you and I mean, your brothers. Your family is cursed after all. Well, see, the we bar's are. not here to chronicle it, so it doesn't count. Oh no, <laughs> but we are. We were gonna tell her everything. Except for the. No, when Straw's not around, then we'll let her know about how he got his car with a fire. <laughs> All right. So you arrive. Okay, the old Salvich Road meanders into a valley, watched over by dark, brooding mountains to the north and south. The woods recede, revealing a sudden mountain berg surrounded by a wooden palisade. Thick fog presses up against the wall, as though looking for a way inside, hoping to catch the town of slumber. The dirt road ends at a set of sturdy iron gates with a pair of shadowy figures standing behind them. Hello? Can we come in, please? You see a, uh, a figure kind of poking his head out. Hi. Yes? Who goes there? I'm Kurt. And I'd like to come in, please. Whose flag do you fly? State your business. Uh... Mr. Vampire Guy, he sent us here to help with you, help you with something. Mr. Vamp? What? Fine. Yeah. Lord Count Von Strahd Von Zerovich sent us here to assist someone with an issue. Yeah, they pull their heads back for a moment and seem to be uh, chatting amongst themselves. After a moment, they, uh, they, they, they put, put, the two guards put their heads back out and says, Oh, you, so you've been sent by the Count, have you? For what reason? Uh, to help someone with something? Like this. supposed to help again? What was the lady's name again? Uh, roll an intelligence check, and I'll prompt your memory. <laughs> <laughs> None of us remember. So, guys. I think we all. Yeah. Oh. All right. You remember that he, she, he mentioned a lady watcher house. Uh, how do you spell that? Uh, I'm terrible at spelling. Uh, this lady watch would be fine. I say that out loud as uh, Green tells her. Lady mm. watcher. Ah. Ah. Yes. The. Uh, the rightful ruler of Falaki. Yeah. That's well, you might as well come inside then. That's lovely, that's what I wanted to do in the first place. Just mind your business. And oh, you kind of worry, open. I'm really good at that. I'm bad at that. Kind of opens the gates up to you. Uh, I'll I'm put the check ins down so you can. You see smoke coming from the forest. <laughs> no, it, it's fine. It's, it, it burned itself out by now. <laughs> oh, wait, this map of Switch is way too small for you guys. <coughs> oh, I'll make you guys tiny. Oh my god, it's Greenzilla. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah, that would be for me. Uh -huh. for, for a brief moment, the little pool that went around. <laughs> Who's short now, motherfuckers? All right. Oh, we've got a tile village to have a look at. Um, it's just uh, in our, our carriage, so. Yeah. So okay, you make your way, start in with in your carriage, and well, as you peer down the road, you notice that there is a secondary wall. Uh, inside this town. Right here. 
Oh, is that what that is? Uh, yep, no, yep, it, that's added in wall. Okay. So, you see the secondary wall in town, and as you stroll through with your carriage, uh, some several guards direct you to park your carriage over here with the horses. Alrighty. Uh, okay. Which has the following description. Mm, on, where are you? This large stockyard has several locked sheds along its periphery and lies adjacent to a roomy warehouse. A wooden sign above the front gate reads Arasek Stockyard. You can see several uh, old trailers is in carriages parked along the inside. There's also what looks to be an ancient and very faded uh, carriage in the far back. It appears to have a bit of a sign on it. You can kind of make it out. Rick won, but most of the writing is all scratched out. Alright, gentlemen. I'm gonna go out on the limb and say the biggest house in town is probably where I go. Ooh, Any objections? No? Okay. I mean, we could just explore a little bit before we go straight to. I'm assuming the... we're going to be able to which house it is. Well, we don't want to take too long because we don't want to end here. We've already taken this long. Bit of a delay getting. Well, Strahd, I only mentioned if we strayed from the path, strayed from going where he wants us to go. We're technically here, so I think we're <laughs> for some side tracking. What do you want to do then? To pick you on? I have no idea. Well, let's do this. Let's go speak with the lady, see what she has to say. After that, we'll explore the town a bit, because I'm sure we're going to be here for Yeah, I kind of want to know what the wall is about. I'm yeah, sure same. We'll, sure we'll find out the lady. And maybe, maybe, if we're lucky, the lady of the town Oh, grants us access, discounts of some sort, maybe. Get things that we need. It's better to speak with her first and see what happens, and then do whatever we want. I'm getting my hopes up, I'm aware of that. Mm -hmm. I, wait, you've been around as long as I have, weird shit has happened. Trust me. Uh, I believe I've been around for as long as you have. Maybe even longer. See, this guy gets it. Regardless, I agree with the idea that we should go and speak with the lady first before we do anything else. We have just entered her town, after all, I believe it would be polite. Uh, is yeah. there anybody nearby? Yes, yeah, uh, roll a roll perception check. I look at Green. Green, do you live here? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I look at Green. Green, do you live here? <laughs> yeah, Green. Biddy, <laughs> Anthony, uh, Green, and Otovi? Or rather, are you going to, well, uh, okay. Green, all right. You see uh, several guards, uh, several co commoners that um, are dressed rather drably, and several people in cloaks watching you from um, what looks like alleyways on different sides of the street. Ooh. I, I'm gonna assume. I'm gonna assume Green tells us about them. Don't want to alarm anyone, but I believe we're being watched. And he kind of gestures slightly with his head towards one of the alleyways. Okay, I, 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 I tell I tell Green to come to down to my level since I can't go. And I and I whisper to him, "They're probably the people that Shrod said." So what was that? You cut off. They're watching them. Since they're watching them, she probably. Those y'all probably get there quicker. So that's where these guards they can guide us there, so we won't get lost. Yeah, off to you. So I I go over to one of the guards. Like, Excuse me, sir. Can you uh 
Yes. To, uh, Lady Watcher. Can you tell us the way the Lady Watchers uh, place? Ah, of course. Continue down this road, and once you hit the wall, head north. You will see the largest house with the red roof. And he kind of gestures and points over in this direction. That manor house belongs to Lady Fiona Watcher House. Wait, sorry, Lady Fiona Watcher. Uh, I keep saying Watcher House, that's the actual name of the house. It's Lady Watcher. I thought you said Waffle House. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's just that for some reason I've always called her last name Watcher House. No, her last name is Watcher, and the house is Watcher House. We're going to the Waffle House. So, my bad, guys. I am very sorry for that flood. <laughs> I thank the God for the I thank the God for the information, and I begin to make my way. Yeah, I'm heading out that way as well. All right. So, do you wish to divert from your path at at, at any point during this, or shall I just move you off to to, to the Watcher House? Move us off to the Watcher House. I mean, I'm just very, tempted. To the very tempted. Alright. I just moved my icon there just to let you know where he's going. He's keeping in time with that one, though. Alrighty. Go for the The whole time, Kurt's got his pipe down. <clears throat> Chilling. Making himself seem as non threatening as possible. Oh, no. No way, apparently, has ever seen a fucking gnome here. Yeah, people are, do are giving you weird looks. They, 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 some of them seem to think you're a child. <laughs> a child with a beard. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're a bit confused weird. about that. <laughs> I kind of weird to a child. That's right, everyone. I'm a very, I am a 185 year old child. Oh, uh, yeah, I've been around way longer than you have, then. So, you've seen some weird shit, then. I, I've been around for 400 years, so... Nice. Alright. So, this house seems disgusted with itself. A slouching roof hangs heavy over furrowed gables and moss-covered walls sag and bulge under the weight of vegetation. As you study the house's sudden, sullen countenance, you hear the edifice actually groan. Only then do you realize the extent to which the house hates what it has become. Jeez. I've never been in a house with such a high opinion of it. Well then. Um. <laughs> I'll go knock. Oh, but he will. Alright. I will knock. I'm standing there. So, a, um, a servant comes gliding up to the door, opening it. Yes? We're here to see the uh, of the house. Who's calling? I'm Kurt. It's Biddy. Over there is our sent... movie. That's Green. That's Aki. We were sent we're here on behalf of the by... Yeah. The door opens into a narrow vestibule. Three stained glass doors and wooden frames lead from it. What is the purpose for your visit today? Um, Kurt has asked us to come assist Lady Watcher in regards to any issues she's having in her town. Alrighty then, come this way. After you, sir, and I fall behind. A wooden staircase leads up to a balcony. At the foot of the stairs is a landing with three stained glass doors and wooden frames. And the you're led actually over here this way. Oh, my bad. <laughs> yeah, they have a weird setup for this map. So, you're led here, uh, past the dining room. An ornate dining table stretches the length of this room. A crystal chandelier hangs above it imperiously. The silverware is tarnished, the dish is chipped, yet all are still quite elegant. Eight chairs, their backs adorned with sculpted elkhorns, surround the table. Arched windows made up of latticework of iron and glass look out onto the small, fog sucked estate. And as you guys look around, you hear a voice, a, a woman clearing her throat. Ah, guests. How lovely. I bow to her. 
Greetings, my lady. We were sent here on behalf of Count Strahd. Ah, excellent. I've been hoping that for, for a reception that soon. Uh, here, three elegant couches surrounded surround an oval table made up of black glass. All are set in front of a blazing hearth, above which hangs the portrait of a smirking nobleman, sporting a broken nose and a tangle of hair, graying at the temple. Several smaller portraits hang on the north wall. The woman beckons you over. It. Please, sit. Make yourselves comfortable. I stand on the couch close to her. Just kind of hop up there. Couch is quite Biddy, comfy. Stay here. Oh. Uh, don't mind our associate. He's um, he's a wary type. Mm. Well, it does pay to be wary. Bad things have been known to happen in the past. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you uh, you could say that. Green kind of, um, he doesn't necessarily sit down, but he has kind of just like a kind of half lean on against the wall next to where Kurt takes a seat. It helps me be at her. <laughs> so, it'd be rude to stand at her couch. <laughs> so, the Count has, has sent you t to me to assist in, the, in matters here in Vallaki, has he? That's Yes, he has. Uh, we must confess that we do not know much of the situation here. Um, is there anything that you could tell us, lady? Well, three uh, up until three years ago, this entire s small, t this entire town was ruled over by an oaf and his simpering wife, the Baron, the v Vargas Valovich. Ah, such a Horrid, horrid man. Too bad that he, he still yet lives, but he still has his followers in the western half of town. As you can as you may have noticed, there is a wall separating parts of the town. We have Yes, three years ago half the people decided that it was time that I lead us and demanded that he step down. He refused. But worst of all, what his son did to my dear daughter. Her eyes narrow briefly. Uh, did he marry her against your will? What did he? Oh no, not that. Okay. He left. Uh, he left. Sometimes le people get up to me about that. Oh, you have to forgive me. Oh, it began with a, with a horrible heart heart heartbreak and ended in in, in the poor girl's sad departure. You have my condolences, my lady. Yes. yes. Well, she is with her father now. She kind of sighs for a moment and then folds her hands in her lap. But be it, be it as it may, we ha I have an entire town to worry about. And I have my sons. But, still, the Baron and his wife and his horrible child... They still rule over part of this town to the west. <coughs> well, this, this cannot go on. We need to finish uniting the town as one under my leadership. And... Here, her, her eyes... She kind of looks around. No, that can wait. What? Wait. I don't like... She, she shakes her she she shakes her head. No, the the main goal is to unite the town. Most of the people do want it, even those on the, on the western side of the wall. But they do not have the will to fight. Many of them are simple folk and trapped in their daily routines. Know anything about cloaked figures in your town? Oh, do not be alarmed by them. They are me merely my watchers. Cloaked so figures that we are in town Sorry. by your watchers. Yes, they watch people that come and go. That's yeah, I'm sure it's the first time they've seen someone like me. 
Well, you are quite unusual. Yeah, I get that a lot. Uh, is there anything else? And I've never seen el elves with such light skin before. She kind of studies Biddy. Yeah, well, we don't usually explore too much. We're not used to adventuring. Hmm. So, you need our assistance in reuniting this town, correct? Yes. That is the main goal. Yes. Is there anything else we should know in order to accomplish this goal for you? She seems to think for a moment. Anything at all? Well, if you find that violence is required against the old Baron, do be aware that his son is abnormal. Abnormal? Uh, and he is... A terrible person on top of that. He spends all day in the attic, from what I understand, and he has caused many servants to go missing in that house. And he drove my daughter into insanity and then death, she adds, I... standing forlorn. I'm a... I want to make an inside check. Yeah, I want to I do that. Finally. Jesus Christ. Alright. Kurt, you know that what she's saying is the truth, but it seems like she is either leaving something out, or she, uh, or she's emphasizing certain things more than, sorry, she's emphasizing certain things more than um, is required, if you know what I mean. So yeah. she's twisting the truth. Yes, she's that's the best it, way to put she's, it. Yeah, she's making it sound like she's not at fault here. Um, was that inside? Can I venture? Like, can I guess what her uh, alignment might be? You can Evil guess. Evil would be like neutral. Is she like neutral in some way, or is she on more on the? Side. Yeah, come on, page load. Uh, let's see. You have to do an intelligence check for that one. Intelligence. Do that shot. Okay, yeah, you, you, you don't know. She is lawful good. <laughs> Biddy. From from listening to her and thinking about stuff, uh, I will whisper it to you. Yes. This is what Biddy loves. Remember, Grizz, it's slash W. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna do the slash R again, but that's because you you were playing seven, uh, and that was just the weirdness. Don't forget it's slash W and then the name of who you're whispering to, because if you just do slash W. I think it still stands it to everyone. I could begin to like this person. So, alright. Um, alright. I'll, I'll ask her this. I'm like, okay, ma'am, I'll say, okay, <clears throat> thank you for the information. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Uh, if we have any more information, we can assume that all the watchers in town are loyal to you. Of course. Right, so if we have any more information, would you would you rather us let one of your watchers know or come to you in person? You can come to me. Oh, I will allow that. Uh, is there now in Fair case time. our our investigation takes us takes us, you know, to a larger part of the city, is there a chance we can go on the other side of the wall, just in case? Oh yes, there is a gate, and there is a neutral zone of sorts that includes the inn and several and several small shops. Oh good. Let's just be fine. All right, well, that's... She, uh, yeah, she, she like reaches in, she, she, she stands up and hand, and holds out a signet ring. Which one of you will wear this to prove that you were loyal to my cause? Um, I will wear I kind of can't. I'm already wearing 
two in that room. So. <laughs> I, I will, I will <laughs> ask her also if there's like a chain that I can use because I'm sure my fingers are much too small for her ring. So I mean, I can. I can, my neck. I can wear it if need be. She hands it to her TV. Of course she does. Hey, you are, young man. All right, I'll, I'll keep it with me. I will put it on. I'll put it in my pocket for now. Well, I, for one, don't have any more questions. Um, does anybody else have a question for the kind lady? No. 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 Well, uh, well, my lady, I do appreciate your time. Uh, we're going to go ahead I and... Yeah, I, I do. We'll go ahead and take our leave and uh, find our way to the end so we can rest the action. Alright. Uh, I think we should take like a two minute break here. Real quick. Fair yep. I need to fill up my drink anyway. Yeah, I can go for a Alright. Sorry there. I'm back. Anyone else? <laughs> okay. I think my cat is happy now that her bowl or food bowl is full. And then everybody's quiet. Sweet girl. 
That's my sweet girl. All right, I'm back. Welcome back. <coughs> also, sorry if you hear feedback from yourself. I've been messing around with my volumes because many different things, many different programs are volumed differently. That's okay. I just get easily distracted when I hear echoes. One of the curses of ADHD. I have a wife. Welcome back. Welcome back. So, out of character, I don't trust her. In character, I don't trust her. Also, I don't say that in front of her. That would be rude. <laughs> <laughs> and done. Out of character, she's lawfully evil. Ah, I had a feeling. Well, she is friends with Strad. In character, I'm never gonna share that. <laughs> in character, you like that. Probably. He looks like no, I, I can trust this person. I like this person. They're lawful in some way. Sure, they're evil, but hey, so am I. Evil doesn't ruin your fun. That's true. What my partner in Pine Valley is evil. Yep. <clears throat> You're chaotic good and, chaotic and she's good. lawful evil. I'm a chaotic good paladin. And since you both work for, for the uh, the investigation bureau, that works out just fine. I don't understand why, <coughs> why people of a private company don't trust the feds. <laughs> I mean, let's be real, she has an imp around her shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they showed that in the pictures, considering that makes it kind of obvious what's going on with their alignment, but... I mean, maybe that's the point. I mean, I thought it was just some kind of fucked up pseudo-dragon, but okay. Well, that's an imp. <laughs> <laughs> so who are we waiting for? Sweetie. Uh, Is everyone back? Um, I think so. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think I hear everyone's voice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is Cave here? Hi, sweet girl. I'm here. Cave. Yeah. All right. Here. We have everyone. Yeah, Cave was talking. Of course, he's here. <laughs> so. You guys are confronted by the fact that some of you don't trust this woman. You've been sent here by uh, Strahd himself to, um, That's you why know. I don't trust her. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, a good reason not to trust her, since you you, you decided that uh, what he's doing is essentially holding two, some of your party members hostage, while uh, you guys are gallivanting around here. Which is kind of a smart thing to do. I congratulate Strahd on. Yeah, I mean, it's not like he knows you guys, so. But he's decided that he can, you know, get you to do stuff for him, and at least as far as you can tell, that's what he's up to. So, 
What are you gonna do? Now that you're yeah, here to... talking to her. I guess we're gonna help out the quotation marks. <laughs> Gonna go to the tavern first. Mm -hmm. yeah, go to the tavern so we can uh, discuss the plan. Actually, then go to the see the opposite side of the wall and get their side of the story, or at least try to. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking too. But we'll discuss that when we get to the end. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh -huh. we, we also have uh -huh. to assume. Off to the end you go. We also have to assume Strahd is watching us. No, oh. I mean, you're a dwarf. I thought you were like a gnome. Yeah, I do, <coughs> I do catch their attention pretty easily. He's not just a gnome. He's a gnome. He's a gnome and a um, an Asimar. They don't know <laughs> that though. Strahd probably figured it out. Yeah. You probably have, hmm, this guy is not a normal gnome. But what's, what's, how do you know what a normal gnome is? So, the, uh, the guards standing by the gate kind of, like, you know, look you over, uh, see the, see the ring on Artovi's finger and, and nod a bit and let you guys through. Thanks, guy. That's not gonna work to get to the other side of the wall, though. Bye, right. Biddy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so as you uh, look around, you see two things that catch your eye. Uh, to the south of you, you spot a what looks like a cramped shop with a dark portico, above which hangs a wooden sign shaped like a rocking horse. There's a B engraved on both sides of the horse. Flanked to the entrance are two arched leaf-framed windows. Through the dirty glass, you see a jumbled display of toys and hanging placards bearing the slogan, Is no fun, is no blinkski! And to the north of you, you see... Okay. Gray smoke issues from the chimney of this large two-story wooden building with a stone foundation and sagging tile roof, upon which several ravens have perched. A painted blue wooden sign hangs above the main entrance, depicting a blue waterfall. Which way would you like to go? So we get booked into the tavern first. Is there a person nearby? Yeah, there's a couple people milling around. Some of them are like, you know, chatting with each other. Others look like they're on watch of some kind. I go up to the nearest person and go, hey, uh, which one of these buildings is a tavern? They point you off to the building with the blue waterfall in front of it. Cool. Thanks, guy. Unwilled into the there. waterfall house building. House thing. I I'm going to call it the House of Ravens. Ravens. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the house with the ravens perched on the roof. Another way to put it. So, let me get your tokens out. There you go. A three-foot-high stone rim surrounds the mouth of this uh, of this well. It's, therefore, it's a, a bit above Kurt's head. A bit, huh? Or maybe a Kurt's eye level or nose level or something. You come up to the to the front door. Doors open. Yay. Revealing the uh, boisterous, somewhat uh, well. Actually, for this time of day, it's still kind of empty. Uh, tap room. Damp cloaks. Oops. Wait, wrong. Yeah, no, this is the right description. Damp cloaks hang from pegs in the entrance port portico. 
the table is packed with tables and chairs with narrow paths meandering between them. A bar stretches along one wall under a balcony that can be reached by a wooden staircase that hugs the north wall. Another balcony overhangs an entrance to the east. All windows are fitted with thick shutters and crossbars. Lanterns hanging from above the bar are re and resting on the tables bathe the room in dull orange light and cast shadows upon the walls, most of which are adorned with wolf heads mounted on wooden plaques. The woman tending the bar looks up at you. Her eyes are kind of sullen. Standing up. Uh, ah, I see we have visitors to town. Yes, ma'am. What may I get for you? Uh, how many beds per room? Uh, well, she stretches a bit. Two of the rooms have two beds each. One room has four beds, and another more private room has a single bed. Um, how much for the four bedroom? She kind of gives you the uh, a a modest price. Uh, I believe one silver. I pay her. For how much for the private room? I, I look at Biddy and go, Biddy. I understand you like your privacy, but right now is not the time. Uh, we need five separate beds. I uh, I That's don't mind fine. sleeping on the floor if be. I don't either. I'm a no. I can just get a, bl a pillow and lay on the pillow. And I don't really need that much... What, any, anything close to sleep, Aki says. I don't you really need You and I have a chat about that. Because <laughs> you got my curiosity. It's been a while since I've seen you. But we'll save that for later. So here, I give her the silver for the four, for the four beds. She nods. Uh, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So, who are you? I'm Kurt. To the elf to my right is Biddy. The guy behind me is Green. The guy next to me is Toby. The kid behind us is Aki. Green and Quines is... Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good, good morning. She actually points out. I was about to... I was about to say, it's afternoon, right? She <laughs> <laughs> actually well, lasts. Well, if, it, if, uh, if, it, if it's morning, he says good morning. Yeah. So, I assume that you've come from well beyond Barovia. Uh, that is a very good assumption, man. And a very yes. correct one. We see foreigners every once in a while. I, once or I twice assume, a year, sometimes. I, I assume I was the dead giveaway. Huh? Yes. <laughs> I don't believe I've seen one of your kind before. I, I've been getting that a lot, actually. It's very strange. Normally where I come from, there's lots of... Hmm. But, uh... Anybody hungry? Food? Anybody want food? Well, we, yes, we have some lovely wolf steaks. Mm, I do believe so. wolf steaks and you guys. I could go for one. I do believe some yeah, food would be in order. You didn't exactly have a chance to eat this morning. That's well, true. you guys had a chance to eat. Uh, I... Back. I've... That's up to them. <coughs> but, yeah. Uh, how much for uh, five wolf sticks? Uh, give me one second. It says, how about this? Since you're spending the night and you are from far away, the first one can be free. I uh, will. Thank you very kindly. Thank you very much. Oh, the bed, the, the a single bed actually costs uh, five silver. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong thing, it's EP, not silver, but, yeah. So it's actually, uh, each bed is five silver, which means the the, the four-bed room is, um, is two gold. Oh, okay, that's fine. I give her the... Yeah, that, they, they use the, the EP, 
thing, and when I was looking at it briefly, I, I, I thought it said SB. But then I was taking another look when I was looking at it for the Wolf State cast, and it's like, ah. Stupid EP, yeah. which is five silver. Uh, well, we're gonna go, I thank her for food, and I'm gonna go over here and. You're supposed to be out soon. If you if you want a pint of wine, it's only three coppers per pint. Um, does anybody else want wine? I'm I'm good on wine. I'm fine for the moment, thank you. She goes back. Back he shakes his head. No, thank you. So the weather here is nice. I mean, you know, there was some dense fog last night, but it seemed to have cleared up. Mm, I think a drab form of weather is common. So, Biddy, I'm curious. What brings you to, uh, Ber Uh... I, as GM, I'd imagine that he probably got swallowed up by random fog at some point and ended up on that road. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I assume I assume that but he would have been um doing a mission as to spy on such a, someone and got swallowed up. <laughs> so I think uh, you just say I was traveling and appeared. Yeah, I just say I was just traveling on my own, and then I just wound up here. To be honest. You know what? I can understand that. This place has been is strange uh, when you see it from the outside, based on what uh, David he hired us. Well, lucky you guys that you just came here voluntarily. Yeah. Well, he asked. The, he's paying us. To, if you stick with us, you might get. And you know, I may give you, I may you know, give your family shit, but I do feel bad about what happened to your brothers. They died protecting, you know, trying to fight for their lives. So you know, they died in combat, which where I come from is a great honor. Wait, fan, Aki kind of, Aki kind, of, you know, yeah. Aki kind of looks over at Kurt. Hey, I've been places other than uh, in certain name country name. I'm Lauren. Thank you. I've been to other places. Uh, he looks over towards uh, t towards Biddy. What were you saying? Hmm? Nothing. Oh, he, he was probably saying that Fan was actually fighting, and that's why I corrected myself. Yeah, I was, like, I was like, wait, except Fan? Except for Fan. He ran Fan away was fighting someone? No, he ran away and got cornholed. It was pretty funny. Uh, sounds like my brother didn't change before he died. Your other brother, though, he actually went out fighting. Oh, he we was a demon. We were fighting a demon, oh, so I think he felt... Oh, if it was a demon, then. Dear God. He would he must have put up quite the fight, then. He, he did. It was actually very... It was actually a very impressive and inspiring sight to see. Our yeah, bard is well, gonna tell stories of that specifically for besides your your family curse. Adler's always been the inspiring one out of the family. So we'll do it all we can to make sure that the curse is actually not real. Not a curse. What would you like us to do with your body if you die? <laughs> That's a good uh, question. Just burn it. Fair enough. Uh, so, do take the signet rings. They are quite precious. Well, considering I still have that letter that you that I found on your brother's body. Yep. I'll probably, we have a list of wind stars. I'll probably take those and find your siblings. Other family. Yeah. If you just show a signet ring to any of my siblings, they'll definitely know. That you're saying it's about nine. 
Green just kind of goes in his pocket and pulls out. The next one on the list would be Pedro. Pedro? Petro. Pedro, Ah. thank you. Yes, Petro. Yeah, I don't actually know what Petro is. (laughs) (laughs) There's Winston, there's Lucy, there's uh, Savignon. Oh, <laughs> Pedro, Viren, Dara, and Nort- Norla. Oh, Pedro is the most study one of, out of all of us. <clears throat> I assume the wolf sticks have uh, appeared by now. Yeah, you've currently got wolf sticks in front of you. All right. Well, um, um, after eating his food, Green does get up. He goes over to um, Toby, just kind of hand on his shoulder. Right? Uh, you all right? You're kind of still up there. On... I'm fine. I actually uh, look at everybody and go, hey, let's go check out the room that she uh, owned us. We find the, en- the, the stairs out- are outside. She points out. Mm. Well, green, Wait, before what? we go, Green does kind of just pat what's going to be on the back. Well, if you do need to speak about anything. You can always talk to me. Well, anyways, I tell I try and motion everybody to go to the room, talk. All right. Sure. sure. Place more private book. Mm-hmm. Set up the yeah. stairs. Yep. Yeah, if everyone's, I'm assuming everyone's going upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Does or Tovi follow? All right. Yeah. Uh, my token. So uh, what's that again? four what's plain be- oh, four, four plain right. beds with straw mattresses line the north wall of this well lit room. Each bed comes with a matching footlocker to store clothing and other belongings. A table and four chairs occupy the corner across from the door. An oil lamp resting on the table casts a bright yellow flame. I'm going to close all the windows and if everybody gets in here, uh, lock the door. Alright. And then after I lock the door, I look at everybody and go, Alright, I'm going to assume you all realize that I didn't want to have this talk downstairs because watchers. Uh, neutral territory this may be, but we were. That doesn't mean anything. Being... Exactly. What I was saying, we are more than likely being being observed. Hell, for all we know, what this space could be watching us. So. But. My my without my way of thinking is we go have a chat with that guy too. Just let him know that we're heard rumors and we're just curious as we don't want to tell him that we're working for what uh Lady Watcher because if we do he'll probably attack us. We make no mention that we have already spoken to Lady Watcher. In fact it would probably be best to while we're in that territory we who should remove the or Toby should remove the signet ring he's wearing. Yeah. Simply um, state simply when we reach the game, simply state we are here on behalf of Count Strahd to uh, fix uh, my situation. Might, we might maybe even mention, mention maybe Count Strahd was bad. Yeah, we might not want to mention Big S. So mm-hmm. what I'm thinking is we offer ourselves as a mercenary group and tell him that we would like to assist him in gaining control of this. That does sound plausible, dear. And we're we're outsiders, we're foreigners, so they might believe us in saying that when we say that we're a mercenary group. And if he, de- and if he does take us, he'll probably see us as disposable, meaning that he'll he won't necessarily try and sign. 
He won't see any reason to. He won't see any reason to suspect. Yeah, that's what I was. And then once we get his side of the story, we can piece it together ourselves and exactly. figure out what we're gonna do. Because I think I think yes, Strahd sent us here to help Lady Watcher, but I think he cares more about this town being united. Mm. And if we can convince him after we've helped him to work with Strahd for uh, what's make it seem like he's working for Strahd, in reality he's not, it might work out. Or Strahd can see through it all. Also depends on how Strahd takes us not, if the other guy's story is um, <clears throat> a good story and true, we do have to consider how Strahd will take the news that we didn't follow Strahd's orders. Exactly. We may be able to convince this uh, Baron Lelovich to work with Strahd, but Strahd might not work with him. Well, maybe we can convince him to give up power. Or Toby's pretty convincing, aren't you, Artovi? I'm pretty convincing, too. Mm. You're right there, Artovi? You're kind of quiet. I'm I'm okay. Sure. Come on, man. We need you at your best. You're supposed to be the leader of this realist group. If we go in as a mercenary group, you're gonna have to take the ransom. If you say so. Are you possessed again? I'm. I'm just not. Too good right now. IRL, I mean. Are you okay? Oh, oh. What's going on? Yeah, I'm okay. I just don't feel too well. Oh, okay. <clears throat> hey, may maybe you need some, some more sleep. Yeah, that that sounds fair. But then uh, I'll, I'll I can keep going for like another hour and then. Do, do you guys feel like uh like you know stopping here? I mean. If, Quinn's not feeling feeling good. Yeah, I think we're at a good spot where we can safely stop. We, I mean, we haven't actually done it yet. That's if fine. we're gonna do something like this, I, I think everybody. Yeah, we, be really. There. Yeah, don't, don't want to press through um, and get, give you bad memories while you're not feeling good. It's not a good association, you know. Yeah. Plus, right. you with a clear head, and if you're not feeling good. Yeah, especially since they they they've uh, you know elected you leader and you know want want you to run it next next week. Hopefully it'll be better then. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, hopefully I'm stressing out better. too for that anyway. Ooh. A lot of work to do for that. Uh, by the way, uh. Chris and uh, Kev, I still need you to make your characters. Yeah, I haven't figured out which oh, character yeah, yeah. to make. We can, we can talk about that, like, you know, later this week. Yeah, all right. You're feeling better. Yeah. I'm, I'm going off to sleep then. Okay, get, get some good sleep and hope you feel better soon. All right, good night.